New Year's resolutions is to get in shape and be healthier. Well, tonight, Janelle Bluto shows us why more Americans than ever need to take their health seriously. The stroller on the move, the baby's great aunt struggling to reach the infant. Just before the baby rolls onto a highway. I caught it down here. And now to a CBS 4 health alert. A new study suggests children are heavier today than they were in the last decade. Yeah. Let's face it, we're getting fat. It's so bad, some call it an epidemic. Childhood obesity is considered an epidemic in the U.S. America's obesity has not doubled, it's tripled in the past 50 years. In the 1960s, that was only about 14% of our population, but today it's closer to 40%. Obesity is a story. <laughs> you ruined my life. <laughs> you're not sorry. You're never sorry. You never change. <laughs> you ruined my life. <laughs> you ruined there you go. 290.6 pounds. A story of gluttony. Now fast forward 10 years and the rates skyrocket above 35%. It's worse in Oklahoma, Louisiana, and West Virginia, where more than 40% of adults are considered obese. No state had a rate below 25% in the latest calculation. Here's a story from Military Times. Nearly 70% of active members are overweight, report fines. 70% of active military duty why would anybody respect an enemy who's out of shape? This guy's gonna run out of breath after 30 seconds of, <sighs> I can't do this, can you tell them to stop? Let's take a break. Nobody takes a break in war. There are no timeouts in war. You can't go and say, hey, uh, Hamas, can you go? let's take a quick 30 second timeout on this war here. Sloth. We're finishing up our series on the workforce shortage. Where did all the workers go? Life's too short to exercise. I'm just going to be honest. There are so many better things to do than exercise. The exercise is such a conspiracy. They go, let's say you spend an hour on a treadmill every day. Pride. Ask everyone to rate themselves on the scale of 1 to 10. So let's do that. A fat <laughs> 10. <laughs> I said what I said, and I meant what I said. Okay. Here you What if I were to tell you that I think you're fat? I think you're a fat little boy. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. These are three out of the seven deadly sins. To really understand why Americans are so fat, we need to go back in time. It's 1973. President Richard Nixon signs the Paris Peace Accords, which finally marks the end of the Vietnam War. A 20-year conflict that crippled the U.S. economy and unleashed a cycle of inflation. Now that the war was over, Americans were unprepared for what was next. There's a new battleground in America's war on obesity rates. It's not just the population, it's kids. Mm. And this may be the first generation, Terrence, that doesn't live as long as their parents. So it's a major problem. Well, researchers found being obese or overweight at any point in adulthood increases your risk of dying from a variety of causes. New research in the Annals of Internal Medicine finds being overweight or obese increased the risk of death from heart disease, cancer, and more. During this time, we see a sharp rise in obesity, along with diabetes. But what happened? How did we go from this to this? So it was around the 1960s 
and the big sugar and chocolate companies were about to get a rude awakening. There was new research coming out linking foods that were high in sugar and fat to heart disease and obesity. So if you're a CEO of a candy company, this is extremely bad news. Not only was this bad publicity, it was also gonna hinder your profits. So what do you do instead? But it now appears that the sugar industry paid two Harvard professors to point the finger elsewhere. Paid two Harvard professors. That's right, you pay scientists from one of the most prestigious schools to blame stuff like butter and olive oil. So this whole time you've been brainwashed to eat foods that were low in fat because it was gonna help you lose weight. But in reality, it really did the opposite. This is because when you eat high carbs, especially sugar, your body becomes insulin resistant and it turns off your body's ability to burn stored fat. Oh yeah, and the same experts told you not to eat red meat or eggs or go outside because they really care about you. So there's two films I recommend everybody watch especially if you want to learn more about processed foods, and I'm not going to spoil it. The first film is called Super Size Me, and the second film is called Sugar. But in Super Size Me, they basically ate McDonald's for 30 days straight, so it's all processed fast food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the dude who ran the experiment ended up getting a myriad of issues. I'm not going to spoil it, so I definitely recommend you watch it for yourself. See, now's the time of the meal when you start getting the McStomach ache. My arms, I feel like I got some McSweats going. My arms got the McTwitches going. It's like after every meal. Oh. oh. It's making me puke. And the second film is called That Sugar Film. Instead of eating McDonald's, they ate foods that were very high in sugar. And the dude who ran the experiment also developed a myriad of issues. So I definitely recommend you guys watch those two films. Those films expose the dangers of foods that are very high in sugar and foods that are very processed, especially in the American diet. So this topic isn't 100% clear. There seems to be many factors nowadays, whether people are sitting and working from home or they're unwinding with some Netflix. Maybe they don't want to cook food at the house, so they door dash their food. So times are different now. People aren't really doing labor intensive jobs anymore. Everybody can work from home. But at the end of the day, you have to take full accountability for what foods you eat and how often you exercise. But maybe our eating habits of sugary foods is a reflection of how our society is now. Everything is quick, everything is easy, everything is instant gratification. 